Hey YouTube, this is Mr. Lufu. This is my third take. I generally like saying when how many takes it takes when I get have to deal with interruptions and whatnot. But um, due to popular demand, I am finally gonna do a deck tech. Um, people have said do a deck tech, and generally I like doing it when I actually have a full deck. So I play test a whole bunch on uh, Cockatrice, and I did do um, uh, on Magic Workstation a bit till no one showed up. So, uh, I like Magic Workstation a little bit more. I, I learned the commands pretty quick. Um, but, so I'm going to quickly go over this deck. I didn't put a sideboard. I can give a rough, rough estimate of what it is. I'm still fiddling with what sort of things I want to put in. Um, but, for those of you who might know, and oh, before I forget, pre Dark Ascension. Um, no, I'm going to change this once Dark Ascension comes out because it's mono red. And that means Faithless Looting has to find a way into this deck. Just card quality like that is, can't be given up. And then you fiddle with numbers of a few cards. But let's go ahead and check it out. So, we start out with a playset of Stromkirk Nobles. Um, I tested for a while with Reckless Waifs, and I pressed it a while, or I tested a while with Furnace Scamps. Um, turns out Stromkirk Nobles is just the best by far. Reckless Wave requires them not to have a turn one play. And um, between Delver decks, the mono white humans, the green white humans, the blue white humans, Mage Blade, like they mostly have a turn one play. So uh, in the long run, Strong Perk Temple gets through there. Oh, green white tokens too. And it just so happens that most of those, Delver Secrets, any white humans deck, um, green white tokens has like Abyssin's Pilgrims and Birds of Paradise, which this can attack into birds. Just makes it absolutely solid. So stronger Noble, easily a, f a four of, and definitely how you want to start out. Uh, you want you want one in your opening seven. Then I play three Grim Lava Mancers. A little bit better in the late game, but always nice to get value from your cards in the graveyard. Uh, this most likely will go up to four once uh, Faithless Looting comes out, because this plus Faithless Looting is quite powerful. Um. I play a single Spike Shot Elder. It's probably going to replace with a Lava Mancer, but this is a lot better in those late games where you have a little bit of Mana Flood. You got four Goblin Fire Slingers. These are kind of important because you really need to get that first turn ping uh, for a lot of things in this deck. And it's red, right? You want to you wanna deal damage straight to their face. And it's another turn one play. I play three Galvanic Blast. Um, between Galvanic Blast and Shock, it really, like, 99.999% of the time, they th that's how the Galvanic Blast behaves. Um, if if it were up to me and I wasn't, if Galvanic Blast wasn't strictly better than Shock, um, then, I generally don't like saying that phrase, by the way, strictly better is such a, a, a bad phrase to say, but in this case it's true. Um, there's an occasionally a way. There's four artifacts in the deck, and we happen to have three out, then this is that much better. Um, but if it were up to me, I'd use old school shocks that I've gotten from, from trades. Um, this one's a very meta dependent one. We've got a play set of gut shots. Again, like I mentioned, there's a lot of X ones running around, and being able to tap out for something, then gut shot their guy on their turn makes it completely worth the two life. Gut shot's very powerful against green white ramp decks killing their birds or their pilgrim um, and just all around very powerful right now just because of how aggressively costed everything is we've got two arc trails again another very meta dependent card being able to get an easy two for one killing two of their guys for one card and probably get a counter on shrine or something and at worst you hit them in the face for something so arc trails pretty another meta dependent card oh in case I have a mission. My metal's full of aggro decks. Um, then, like all red decks, you have to include four Shrine of Virgin Rages. This is a win condition so much time you play it out and they have to find a way to deal with it, because if not, it just gets insane really quick. I played two Incinerates, some more spot removal for some of the bigger things that aren't X1s, specifically Golem tokens from Blade Splicer. And then we've got Stormblood Berserker. This card is just insane. It's such a beat, and it's so hard to deal with if you get a turn 2. A turn 2, 3-3, three, three, they can't be blocked by 2 or more creatures with all the instant speed removal that's there. is huge. And it also combos well with Volt Charge. 
bolt charge keyword like if not, if lightning bolt was legal <laughs> no um, I wouldn't replace this I'd probably replace the galvanic blasts but um, bolt charge the keyword is proliferate so between shrine of burning rage um, uh, Stromkirk Noble and Stormblood Berserker, those three cards, this just gets insane really quick. It can build up damage really, really fast. Um, then you've got a playset of Chandra's Phoenix. Again, the same sort of thing. Generally, it's a shock. Then they find a way to kill it. You get to recur it really quickly. There's a lot of red instants and sorceries. So Chandra's Phoenix is very important in that sense. And it's going to be even better once Faithless Looting comes out, because then you can discard him and then recur him, and then you get card value. Rest are all mountains. I'm sure you guys can do math to figure out how many there are. Um, cards that are in the sideboard are two Coths. Reason, I really wanted to put Coths main board. I just could not, it, it, it gets, because you play so many spells and so few lands relative to some other decks, um, it gets it gets kind of iffy to try and hit four mana. I found it was easier to consist to have two arc trails and two coughs main board uh, where I play but so that's why I have two in the sideboard there's four dismembers sideboard as well um, for more control they like to play giant things again since since consecrated sphinx runs around a lot uh, worm coil engine is played quite a bit too gets a little iffy that's there and then there's a uh, four full shock refugees for the mirror matchup because a two three pro red is is huge. They can't deal deal with it. Like if you're playing mono red, have four of them inside board. Just that simple. And then I think the rest of the space. No, it can't be the rest of the spaces because that's eight, ten. Uh, there's oh, there's traitorous blood. That's that's for the more control decks where once they play a big guy, being able to take it for a turn swing can be a huge, huge change in pace. And then there's some manic vandals for those people playing like tempered steel. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this deck tech. As I complete my, I'm in the process of building three modern decks right now. So as I um, proceed to complete those, I will um, do more deck techs. Hopefully you guys like this. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, and peace.